Hey, what's happening everybody? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad again with another video just to give you guys a little bit of insight. Uh, I'm sitting here working on some pieces right now. Uh, one for a, a client of mine that's giving me some commission work up in New York area and another client that's out in Dallas, uh, the Fort Worth area. Uh, big shout out to them. Thanks for support and your business. Uh, and I'm going to keep trying to bring y'all that fire. But right now, let's get off into something that I think will be very important for you guys out there, as well as it can help boost your sales, boost your sales, improve your craftsmanship. And not only that, it will set your work apart from other people out there and what i want to talk with you guys about is resisting and we're talking about color resisting and y'all forgive me uh got a little little stopped up down here i know some of you places out there are already warm but uh it was 49 degrees last weekend and a friend of mine had a birthday camp out party so here i go i decided to go and camp out and now my whole head is congested so forgive me if you hear me a little stopped up but i want to talk to you guys about resisting now a lot of crafters don't tell you about resisting that's kind of like a little hidden secret there that because that's what really sets your work apart especially when you're getting off into two-tone color work and I know some of you guys out there may have a airbrush kit. Believe me, I know. In my earlier years, I bought an airbrush kit, brought the tank. The tank is still over there. I guess you guys can see that. Yep, that's my big old behemoth over there. Even that, that door right there is what I use to spray on. I used to spray on. Now I don't spray anything. I, I do all resisting work. And... Here's the thing, and the product that you want to use, I'm, then regardless of whoever you use to buy your supplies from, uh, there's nothing that I've found that's better than the EcoFlow or EcoFlow uh, satin sheen finish. Now, this says nothing about resisting at all, period. You can go into Tandy a thousand times, and um, if you're looking for a resistor, there's not one that's on the shelf that says resistor or resistant agent or anything but this is the stuff that you can use and i've learned this i didn't know this until actually i took the class let me let y'all get a close-up just in case you want to go buy that but whether it's from tandy or weaver or hide crafters or hide company or whoever you want to get it from it doesn't matter you want to get the satin sheen leather finish and this is what crafters use as a resistor. There's nothing out there that says resistor that I found. So anyway, but and this is water based. So it works with all of Tandy's water base, especially the gel antique. And this is what I use when I do this. Uh, but resisting is like with this piece here uh, for my customer and my client in New York. Uh, the tooling work was already laid down, and she wants this piece, uh, this belt to be purple and black. So I have my black antique gel, and I've already laid my purple down. Now, yes, you can buy the EcoFlow brand purple paint or whatever paint that's in, in, in at Tandy use or whatever your leather supply store use. But guess what? This stuff is so great that it works with any, any water-based paint any this right here is 50 cent at Wally world and this is the purple that i use on this belt so i would go on record to say any water-based paint satin sheen finish works with it as a resistor now why do we want to resist this because when i lay this purple down I don't want to sit here and have to paint the whole entire belt purple, then come back and hand paint the whole entire belt black. So what I want to do is I, want, I would like to tell you to resist the, lay the first paint the piece with the one color that you want to lock in. Now in this particular piece, the purple is my accent color. It's not the main color because the main color of the belt is black. but the purple is my accent color so i hand painted all of the purple 
Then I come back with my, my echo flow. And this stuff here by being water-based, you want to shake this up real good because all of the sediments will settle to the bottom. So you want to shake this up real good. And I just, I just grab the old top off of the laundry jug. You guys know me by now. I'm not about spending a whole bunch of money. I'm going to tell you don't spend no money on a paint tray when you have this stuff in your house for free. Use it. And we're just going to shake that up. I'm going to pour a little bit into here. Now, the thing with this uh, Echo Flow satin sheen is that you have to use it I'm not going to tell you to hurry up and use it, but you want to be pretty proficient with your time because what will happen, if you see the bottom of that cup, it'll start to dry. And as it's drying in this cup, it will do the same thing to your paintwork and it puts a film on top of it. And I would tell you guys to use a paintbrush. Use a paintbrush. It's more controlled. You can really stay on top of your paint pieces because here's the deal. If you resist anything other than the part that you really want resisted, when you get ready to put your antique gel on top of it, that part like, for instance, you see the interior part of where I did my vayner? I don't want to resist that part. So I'm very careful to keep my paintbrush on top of my paint. Because if it overflows into my vayner work here, then when I get ready to lay down my antique gel, then that vayner is going to stay the natural color of the belt. Now, it might come out to be a beautiful piece, but I would have to do that throughout the whole entire piece. I would have to resist that vayner all the way down. So it will be one continuous piece. Now, that might be a good idea for another piece, but for this one here, I want that part to be black. Okay? So we're using the paintbrush, and we're going to stay right here on top of the purple. And you're just going to take your time, as in with all leather work, take your time, and let the let the satin sheen do what it's supposed to do. Now, here's the thing with this satin sheen, using it as a resistor. You just can't put this stuff on one time and forget it. You can't. This doing it this way will require you to do it an additional two more times after the first coat. So that's three coats all together. Now, here's the thing. Each coat we we requires, or what I've found to work most efficiently, is each coat would have to take 24 hours to dry. Some crafters might tell you something different. Uh, some might tell you some type of shortcut. Uh, and believe me, I've did all of the shortcuts, put it on a dryer, set it out in the sun, tried to hurry up and let the satin sheen dry and all of that good stuff. It does dry, but it does not resist like it's supposed to. Uh, if you, as opposed, to if you just let it set for a full 24 hours and do what it's going to do. So. Now, this piece here that I've already worked on has already had one coat. This is my second coat that I'm laying down. Uh, I have a client that's in, in Fort Worth. This is the second one here where I went in and I painted the name and then painted the center part of the belt. Now, this, is already ha this already has three coats. So, if you guys are on my email tribe or on my Facebook page, uh, the final pics will be on there as well as this one here. So you can actually see how it how the resistance works. Uh, we're at our nine minute mark, but just to give you guys an inside track on resisting, and I think resisting is way better than airbrushing. Airbrushing, yeah, you can use multiple colors, but how are you going to control the overspray? With a paintbrush, you can control 
not going over or out of bounds what you're trying to paint and you can't go out of bounds on what you're trying to resist unless you load this paintbrush up with with either paint or resistor but and I have to keep keep using this stuff so before it dries out but you can always shake off the access and just keep going which like I said is more control and as it dries it's going to put that little film on there what you saw in the bottom of the cup and so when this gets ready to uh, fully dry, I can come back and lay down my antique gel on top of it. And the great part about resisting it this way is I'm going to gel the entire belt, even over the black, because this is going to do exactly what I needed to do, resist the black antique gel. And it's going to make it, that gel sit on top of the purple. So when I get ready to come back with my lamb's wool or, or just a paper towel, you can even use paper towel. I'm going to wipe the whole entire thing down. So what's black is going to stay black and what's purple is going to stay purple. I hope this helped you guys and gave you a little bit of insight. Play around with it. Man, I got to keep on working. This is starting to dry. Uh, play around with it. And if you have any questions, comments, hit me up, Premier Leather Crafters uh, at Yahoo.com or hit me up on Facebook or any of the social media sites. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, uh, Flickr, and, and it's all kind of stuff that I'm on. But uh, Or even just subscribe to the video down below and leave me an email address or your comments and your questions and I'll get back to you as quick as I can, ASAP. Uh, or just hit me up, 256-438-9344. That's Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad right here, Premier Leather Crafters. Hey, happy crafting. It's a dying trade. We need more crafters like you out there. Y'all have a blessed one. I'll see you on the other side. Peace.